All right, my friends, welcome back. It's John, and today we're gonna talk about a very special car to me. It's one I've never owned, but it holds a very special place for me, and I think represents a pretty special little place that's underappreciated in Chrysler's history, and that is the Cloud Cars. <laughs> the Chrysler Cirrus, the Dodge Stratus, and the Plymouth Breeze, released in 94 is 95 models. These were possibly the best of Chrysler's design language of cab forward architecture. I have a special little place in my heart for Chrysler's of the 90s, and part of that was where I was in my life. Now, as you know, if you've been here before, this is an opinion channel, so this is not going to be a hard-hitting journalistic, this is the history of the car. This is really more my feelings about it, and its place in history. And when I do these, I like to find a twist, right? Something that goes, oh, I didn't know that. I actually found it researching this while looking at the LH cars, the big ones. I'm going to do a video on that sometime in the near future because it was pretty cool what I found. But I want to talk about specifically the Chrysler Cirrus here because I wanted one and it wasn't the right time in my life and it just passed by. And I've always kind of regretted that because it was one of the cars that I've driven that really made a huge impression on me. Now you might think that's silly, but bear with me. So Chrysler has a long history and they've made some great cars in their history. The, the 300 and the Challenger and the Charger almost went bankrupt as we all know. And then the K car and all of its derivatives and stretches and lengthenings built the entire 80s for Chrysler, including the minivans. And I really like a lot of those cars. I did a video about the K car, but its later derivatives, the, the Shadow and the Spirit and the Dynasty, I really like those. They're boxy and they're very pedestrian, but there's something about them that I really, really liked. Now I can look back and say they were not as good as a, a Civic or a Corolla or a Camry. But man, I really, really liked them. And I knew people who had them. And I liked the attitude that Chrysler and Dodge and Plymouth had at the time. I don't know if you remember these commercials they would do where they would take the badges off of cars and put them in a Dodge product and then a Honda product or a Toyota product. And people overwhelmingly liked the Dodge products better. And I, I think it really spoke to them. They were playing the game with an attitude. They had Parts of that time, it was by American. Parts of it was, we're going to build the best car in the world, and we're going to prove it to you. And if, if you don't like it, buy something else. By the late 80s, early 90s, there'd been another financial downturn. Chrysler was not quite in danger of going bankrupt, but their product line was stale. Lee Iacocca was in the way. They were gently pushing him out, and three new platforms were being developed. The LH, which were the big cars, the JA, which is the Cirrus and Stratus, and the Dodge Neon. Now think about that. Three of their very famous cars came out all around the same time. They worked on all these together, and I found out later that the JA platform cost $900 million. That's a lot of money, but one of its competitors, they spent $6 billion developing it. All right, we'll talk about that in a minute. So this represented a new design language for Chrysler, the cab forward architecture, pushing the wheels out, shortening the overhangs, basically having one long continuous line and maximizing the interior space. Nothing else quite looked like it. Of course, Ford had the Taurus in 86, I think it was, and it was a revolution. It was a huge, huge success, and it set the direction for a lot of what happened for largely the next 20 years in midsize automotive design, but I think these Chryslers were just as significant. They massively updated the dashboard, cleaned things up, and put an emphasis on matching what the Accord and the Camry could do but making it more fun. I think they created three very stylish cars. The Breeze looked a little boring, but somewhere in the late 90s, I think it was 97, maybe 98, I went and drove a Cirrus. And I 
absolutely fell in love with it. It was one of the most impressive cars I had ever driven. When you think about a lot of what was coming out from Ford and Chevy at the time, they felt like driving bathtubs in a lot of ways. And this felt lively and sure it wasn't sporty, I'm not saying it was a sports car, but it felt open and airy and lively and a, a, a very clean dash. It was just fantastic. I believe that Chrysler's of the 90s really nailed it, at least for me, in terms of dash and seat and layout and driving feel. Multi-valve V6, cab forward design, remote keyless entry, a luxurious leather trimmed interior, and the recipient of the JD Power & Associates Best Entry Midsize Car and Initial Quality Award. The cars were released with three engines, a two liter four cylinder, a 2.4 and a 2.6 Mitsubishi V6. And basically the three cars only differed in the nose, the wheels, and the tail lights. Everything else was the same. All that differentiated them was trim packages and what was available. So I'm not gonna dig into all that. You know, suffice it to say that the Chrysler might have the option of the automatic with an auto stick. You know, you can manually shift up and down, whereas maybe the Plymouth didn't, but it doesn't matter. The fact is, is these were award-winning cars, widely loved by the press. They won Motor Trend's Car of the Year, and then they were Car and Driver's 10 Best two years in a row. But they weren't huge successes. They, every single one of them sold I believe every single one of them sold slightly less than the previous version. So the, uh, the the Spirit sold better than the Stratus. I'm not sure why, but something didn't quite resonate. They didn't quite have the massive success they were expecting. This is interesting that if you look at the design, here's an interior for the Cirrus and here's an interior for the Honda Accord at the time. I love the 95 Honda Accord. The Accord is just a little cleaner, just a little smoother. Honestly, it's a little more modern. It's a little more forward thinking. I do like this Chrysler dashboard. I do like what Chrysler was doing. But in comparison, you can see the Chrysler was updating an old design for the dashboard. The Honda had leapt into the new generation. At the time of its release, consider that one of the competitors was the Ford Contour. And that's the competitor I was talking about earlier. Ford designed this as one of their world cars, taking into account American tastes, modifying it to America. And the Contour was a good car. It was modestly reliable. It was extremely well handling, but it was tiny inside it. Honestly, when I drove it, it felt like an Escort. And it was widely panned for being so small inside is not really being built for Americans. It was built more for European roads and European drivers. In 95, when the Cirrus and the Stratus and the Breeze were released, the Chevy Corsica was its competition. Now, Chevy came out, I think in 96, if I remember correctly, with the Malibu, which was a much better car and boring as melting vanilla ice cream. So its real only competitors were probably the Camry and the Accord, both of which were arguably better, but Chrysler still had that, that sense that they were swinging for the fences, that they weren't just trying to be a little bit better than GM. They were actually trying to build great cars that were more fun to drive than what the Japanese were building. I think this represents a really special period in Chrysler's history. Three new platforms, cab forward design, they were building things that weren't really like anything else in the market at the time. They were building it with an attitude and a, a sense of bravado. That's the word I'm looking for. They redesigned these cars in 2000, simplified the lineup, but it never really caught fire. After that, Ownership of Chrysler had changed. Daimler had practically ruined it. And everything became really generic. The plastics became cheaper. The design became more squared off and not in a good way. 
not in a art deco way, right? Mid-century modern, in a boring, incomplete, half-baked way. And since then, Chrysler's really done nothing that I love. Individual models, sure. The Ram, the Grand Cherokee, their minivans are still good sellers. But from the car perspective, they lost their way and it's like they stopped trying. Now, of course, they're owned by Fiat Chrysler, which was a merger made in heck because Fiat doesn't have any platforms to share with them, so Dodge eventually just became the performance division. Big engines, old platforms, lots of attitude, but nothing to really compete with head-to-head -head what was out there. I think the 90s really represent this special little moment in Chrysler history. And thinking back on it, you think about the Toyotas and the Hondas of the time, they were fantastically reliable. You can't quite say that about the Cirrus and the Stratus and the Breeze, but they weren't complete train wrecks either. I did a little bit of research about this, and the Cirrus holds up relatively well. I mean, if somebody t came to me today and said, here's $3,000, go buy a 1995 car, eh, I'm not sure the Dodge Stratus would be what I wanted to get, but I would think about it. I think it would probably be a 95 Honda Accord with the four-cylinder, but I'd think about it. And from what I saw, the Cirrus ends up somewhere in the slightly above average reliability. You know, 3.2 out of 5, you know, 52 out of 100, that kind of thing. A little bit below the Toyota and the Honda, but above average. And it doesn't have that reputation. And I find that very frustrating. I think this was a seminal project. I really do. As important as the LH cars and the Neon were, and it represents that special moment in Chrysler's history, which was then abandoned into generic, poor quality, just not competitive products. I always wanted one, but it was never the right time in my life to buy one. 1995, I graduated from college. My car broke on its honey on our honeymoon. My wife's car broke two or four weeks later, I don't remember exactly, and we had to buy her something. We had to buy it over a weekend because she was starting a new job on Monday. It was between a Pontiac, a Sunfire, and a Dodge Neon. And the Neon dealer was open on Sunday, and we enjoyed driving it. That Neon was a revelation to me. Being the first Chrysler product I'd owned, it was, dare I say, sporty. It was fun to drive. It was tossable. It was a hoot, and we loved it. The seat materials, the design, the dash, it was just a fun car. And at that point, we were years away from the problems that it was going to give us of electrical gremlins. The transmission slipped when it was wet, when it was raining, and then eventually it blew a head gasket and we had to replace it. But it was a hoot, and at the time, I was changing my opinion about Chrysler cars and kind of becoming a Chrysler guy. And I went and drove that Cirrus and fell in love. Tried to figure out if it made sense to, for us to buy maybe a Stratus, and it just never did. And I kind of regret it, honestly, because I think these are important cars in American history. I hope as time goes by, people start to appreciate more of what they represented. Even if they weren't a home run in sales, even if they didn't set the standard for reliability compared to Honda and Toyota. They have a place right here in my heart. And I'm sad that Chrysler lost its way afterwards. But for the moment, I thought they were the best mid-sized cars in America. Let me know your thoughts below, guys.